Hey guys, Rochelle here with Amethyst Ascension. If you are new here, welcome. And if you are returning, thank you so much for joining me again. So today I'm going to be doing a little chat about, hopefully I can keep this very brief, but about Kickstarter and my experience with Kickstarter. And because I had a recent question about what Kickstarter was from a uh, person that just found my channel. So I said that I would do just a brief little video. Now, I personally have backed, while I'm doing this video, I'm going to show um, the newest deck that I got from Kickstarter, or decks that I got from Kickstarter. These are by Lisa Pepez. Um, by and her channel is Lisa Pepez here on YouTube. It's the Unicorn Journeys Tarot, and it is the same cardstock. It's got the same gilding on the side. It's still, still got the little card authenticity card or certificate, yeah, of authenticity. It's even still got the bling on the back. Okay, it is <laughs> the cutest ever, but. This is why it is important to know what you're backing and who you're backing it from on Kickstarter because that is such high quality. Even in the mini, it's the same quality as you got in the mini as what you do in the large one. I'm going to show you the large one. So let me take it out of the box because I don't want to ruin the inside part for anybody because she had it special. And I had to re-record this because I accidentally showed it. I don't know at this point if it even matters, but because people are getting their decks now. A lot of people have gotten their decks now. But look at that. Look at the bling on the back here. These are not in order. Sorry, guys. Let me see if I can get any lower while I talk about this. So... Kickstarter is a platform that was designed in order to, it's a crowd uh, funding platform. So if somebody has a product like said tarot deck that they want to get funded or they want to get printed and have a good quality because the more um, people that you have, the, the bigger quantity that you're purchasing, the lower the cost, but you get more perks. So you can get nice gilding on the on the cards. You can get a really nice card stock, um, good core, uh, good saturation in your cards. Um, you know, a little bling like the holographic stuff that you see here. So that's why people will use a crowdfunding place like Kickstarter in order to get their passion products, you know, off the ground so that it, because they just can't afford it themselves. So that's where we come in as people that go in and support people that are, you know, trying to get a product brought to market and they don't have big funds in order to do it themselves. So, and that's what the rewards are. They'll usually tell you what the rewards are. You gotta read everything really well. And actually, Lisa, who created this, she's also done a video on uh, Kickstarter. If I remember, her video was really good. Uh, her videos usually are very, very good, very well informed videos. So, um, if I remember, I will stick a link, or if I can find it, I will stick a link in the description down below and send you over to that video because hers is very much in detail. And she's done a Kickstarter now, so she has the experience. And let me just say also, her Kickstarter campaign was so good, even before it ever started. And anyways, let me just, where to start? I've got so much to say about Kickstarter. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to rewind a little bit and just say, these are the things that I look 
four because you really do have to be careful when you are getting um, decks on Kickstarter. And the things that I always look for is whether or not that other person has um, supported other creators. That is like the number one thing that I look for, if they are also a supportive person. Because it's really difficult for me to say, I want to support you when I've never seen you on your account support anybody else. Now, that's not always the case because maybe they created a new account in order to um, do this or they want to keep things private or whatever. But just know as a consumer, I do look for people that are also backing other people. That's important to me. I want to see somebody that's also supportive who's asking for support in order to get their products done, right? So I want to see somebody that's supportive in nature. That is the first thing that I look for. Not everybody's going to look for that. Not everybody's going to care, but I most definitely do. I think that sells a lot about a person. So another thing I look for is social media, right? The reason I look for social media presence is because I want to make sure that they're not just going to, you know, take my money after the project has been funded and then not follow through with what they said that they were going to follow through. So far, I've got two decks now that that has happened where they just skated off with the money and one, you get um, updates every once in a great while, but it was supposed to be delivered over a year ago. So, and the other one, the lady just canceled all of her social media and she had made one update or was stringing people along like every every couple of months she would make an update. And this was well over a year ago also. And I had purchased two decks because I bought one for me and one for a friend. So I was out two decks with that one. But that, you know, that is a risk that you take sometimes. But one of the ways that you can help alleviate that a little bit, lower the risk, is by seeing whether or not somebody has a good online presence, such as Lisa. Okay, Lisa is very big in our tarot community. And you could not just, um, she didn't just appear one day on Kickstarter. She had a whole bunch of, um, uh, you know, public posts that she did where people could follow her all along on her channel, right? So to me, she would not want to, not that she ever would. No, I don't ever see that. But I'm just saying, she would have never wanted to hurt her reputation because she was so public and had created her um, public reputation with her channel and the things that she teaches and the books that she writes and stuff like that. So it's much less risky is what I'm trying to say. Backing somebody that has a strong presence that you have maybe followed along. You've actually been able to see the process all along. And you know what? Not that those things don't get pushed out sometimes longer and longer and longer because life happens, right? But as long as they're continuing to update you, like maybe once a month, depending on what phase they're in and what their projections were. Because right out of the gate, you're going to want to read everything that's on the campaign. I will say I have been guilty of not reading it all, seeing the pictures and going, ooh, I really want that. And I think most generally, I've been very fortunate. But I've also backed out of about 20 Kickstarters now, roughly about uh, 20 just because maybe I got a funny feeling or I changed my mind. And nine times out of 10, people will contact you and say, was there anything that I could have done? And that's good. I think that that's a good follow through, right? Um, because they're, they want to make uh, the people happy. They want to also because they want to sell a product. So that's just good customer support is to say, hey, well, listen, I see that you decided not to to back it. Was there something that I did wrong? Was there something that you would like to see? You know, yada, yada, yada. And nine times out of 10, it was just, 
I changed my mind or something else came up. <laughs> I, I spent my funds somewhere else and now I can't do it. And that's an, another thing with Kickstarter. There's different campaign time periods. I've seen them 60 days long and I've seen them less than 30 days long. So you want to read that and find out when the campaign ends because whatever card you use or put on um, file with them to pay for it, that's when it will go out. That's when they collect the funds, right? So you want to be mindful of that also. So if there's something that's a 60-day and you really want it, then do it. At the last moment, if you have to back out, then you can back out. Up until they collect the funds and it ends, you can back out of a project. Let's say, for instance, you see comments and you don't like the comments that you're seeing coming through, you know, or, um, I mean, any number of things. But once they've collected it, then they've collected it. And there's, to my understanding, there's nothing that you can do at that point. So... The two biggest things for me is whether or not they have ever uh, backed other people. And I'm seeing a lot of people that are coming on now that are doing, um, you know, even AI decks. And it's not that I am completely against that. I'm not. I like to know the circumstances before I make a final judgment on whether or not it's something that I want to support. But that are coming in that have never supported anybody else, and have never had another campaign before. So let me give you a for instance, and I'm not trying to pick on Lisa at all, but she's the perfect example of somebody that I felt very confident in supporting her Kickstarter, and she's got another one that's about ready to start too, which I highly recommend. I'll put a link down below to where you can get this on pre-order pretty soon, as well as or maybe now, I'm not sure, but also to a pre-launch page for Sassy Dragons, which is the one that um, her wife, Lee, uh, Peggy, did. They both did it together, but I think this one was more Lisa's and the other one is more Peggy's, but I could be wrong there. Um, but anyways, I was not, I had no problem feeling confident in supporting her or supporting um, Peggy in this next one that she's doing either because, and because they have an online presence and because they've delivered, right? But also because if you go and look at the profile of the person like Lisa, she has supported, granted I follow her, I have followed her for many years now, but and I know that she has supported many creators, right? And also promotes those said creators on her channel as well. So she's an extremely supportive person. And that makes a difference for me. And there are other people that I have also backed because I also, beyond liking it. Because in many cases, I like a lot of the decks that I see. But... I don't feel comfortable anymore just backing them because of being burned now a couple of times by people that hardly have any kind of presence. So if you are somebody that's wanting to do a Kickstarter in the future, I am also a voice of the community who also shares decks on my channel, does reviews on my channel, and has, I think I've um, done like 68, I've backed like 68 Kickstarters now, I think, and backed out of about maybe 20 of them. So, and there's a lot that I haven't backed, right? But there was a reason why I didn't back them beyond maybe didn't, you know, not really caring for the artwork or whatever. It was because they did not have an online presence. Um, they're not promoting their stuff. And I know many artists don't want to have to do that because it is a lot of work, but that's part of it. Promotion, self-promotion is part of it and seeing the journey, you know, and Lisa, because I was in her membership for the longest time, she was doing updates all the time to her um, unicorn, unicorn uh, group members or channel membership, you know, so she kept them um, 
with videos kept them up to date on what was going on and she would show the new stuff but she also did that on her channel publicly as well as she had a newsletter so people could follow her process all along and that's wonderful somebody's not just going to throw that all away so that is less less risk obviously you want to read through all the fine print find out what the projected time of delivery is, and then be patient, okay? Because sometimes we don't always understand why with certain creators, you it goes through really good, like Lisa. Her campaign was smooth from what we could see because she kept us updated all the time. And... When people are investing money, it's not just about money either. It's about just wanting to know because they were not just invested in the deck, but they were invested in the whole process because she made them and she didn't make them, but she helped them be invested by having a presence, right? And getting other people involved and sending her decks out to other people so that they would also review it. And that's just wise. That's just smart. Um, and they were extremely supportive in nature. And that to me is the first thing, the first thing that I look for, and then the presence. So if something were to happen, you're still probably gonna get your decks. It might take a little bit longer because you know, shipping issues or fulfillment center issues or whatever. But when something runs really, really smoothly, you can tell that somebody has really done their homework, okay? And I mean, clearly Lisa did her homework because hers, her campaign was not, not even close to like one of the oldest campaigns. I'm still waiting on, I think maybe 15 decks and maybe a handful, maybe five or six of them are way before, way before Lisa did hers. Or I mean, even after actually. But she, I think she was pretty close. I don't have it right in front of me, but I think she was even pretty close to her projection of when it was going to be delivered, even with a couple setbacks here and there because I think she just overly, and I could be wrong, I could be wrong, but she just seems to be a very um, well-researched lady, okay? And, and this was her first campaign. So, and now I've got other ones that I'm, like I said, still waiting on. And for the most part, as long as they keep you updated, you know, that is a good thing. When they don't keep you updated, that's when it's questionable. Now, another thing that I want to talk about, like, for instance, uh, Mustafa with the Baroque Tarot. He runs really good campaigns also because he puts on, if you were a previous campaign um, supporter, he gives little perks and discounts and gives you like uh, bags and, and uh, like special things that you can get or that you automatically get rolled in with even the lowest price because you were a supportive person. So he also like honors other supportive people, right? And he has backed if I remember right, like 130 at the time, like 130 other projects, which to me is a very honorable thing. So when somebody comes in, these are the things that I would be very, very leery of. And I will put Kickstarter down below. But, you know, the, the link. I'm sorry, I'm kind of like all over the place because I have so many thoughts. <laughs> and I've got this menopause fog brain, right? Um, But... One of the things for me, if somebody has never backed anybody else and it's their first campaign, it's not that I would say don't back them. I'm not going to say that. 
but I would be very mindful. Those are the ones that I would watch from the very beginning and keep an eye on the way that they're communicating with people, whether or not they're getting back in touch with people when people make comments. Those are the ones to watch more diligently. Those are the ones to read more um, closely. And it's not like I want to call anybody out. I don't. Not at all. Because I will say, the majority of all the Kickstarters that I've done have have been successful. Maybe not necessarily gotten them in the time span that you know, they said, but I think that's also very common, especially like during certain times when a lot of people are putting out decks. So, you know, I've got one that I'm waiting on that I backed before a lot of these that I've been getting and I still haven't got it. And they sent out some of them and I actually purchased two because I wanted to do a giveaway of one of the decks and it took a month in order to even secure, once the decks got into port here in the U.S. or wherever they were supposed to, I think in the U.S., it took a month to even secure a truck driver. That seems really weird to me when other people are having no issues with these things that have, now I'm not going to say that it's not legit, but in situations like that, if you've got an ask for an update after a month and then say, well, I would have updated you, but there's not been any updates since then. It's hard to believe that it's been a month to just get a truck driver. I'm not saying that that can't happen. It very well can. But that's when you want to stay in really good communication and just say, okay, so I called this week. I can assure you, that people that are invested in these decks, they're going to be more upset with lack of communication than too much communication. There is no such thing as too much communication. So I've seen other people do um, just like little updates about, well, this hasn't changed, but I wanted to, you know, send you a little joke and let you know you know, yada, 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 or I hope you have a wonderful day or whatever, just knowing that you're staying in contact, that can ease a lot because the person is still invested, right? They're still working towards getting that Kickstarter fulfilled for everybody. I'm sure it's highly, highly stressful. That's why I've, I've done like 12 decks now, maybe 13, somewhere around there. And some of them I've thought about doing Kickstarter and then I'm like, nope. <laughs> I don't want to deal with the headache of it. I really don't. I just, I am more a person that likes to create. I don't want to go out and promote and I'm not good at that, right? I I am on my channel here, but finding other avenues to do that and, and asking other people for help and I'm just not good with that. I'm not good with the promotion part, I am much better with the creating part. Even when I did my jewelry business, it was exactly the same way. I would do my shows and stuff, but, and I did actually pretty well when I did the jewelry until the economy went really bad. And I just, it wasn't feasible for people to be buying luxury items like mine because I would do like bead embroidery and bead weaving big necklaces and bracelets that would be anywhere from two to four hundred dollars because it was like you know a long time uh creating those items sewing them by hand which is also why I've got arthritis in my hands now but anyways I got way off track there so I do suggest doing kickstarters Absolutely. I mean, supporting people, absolutely. But be mindful and just understand that if it is somebody that has absolutely no presence, they don't show their Facebook, they don't show a Facebook page, they don't show an Instagram, they're not showing pictures of their process, they're not, um, they don't have a YouTube channel where they've done, 
you know, uh, showing you along the way of their creative process and all that. And then on top of that, they have never, ever supported another person. Those are red flags. So if you do support them, and I have supported them, and the majority have been very successful, just be mindful that you are taking the risk if you if you back them and then they take the money that you're taking the risk that you might not ever see the rewards of that and they just get your money. And as far as I know, Kickstarter does not really go after people if they don't um, follow through with the rewards because people understand when they are backing things that it is a risk that you take when you back somebody, when you're trying to support somebody. Another thing that I have seen happen on Kickstarter is large companies or not even large companies, but somebody that starts off independent or that you think that is independent and then you support them on Kickstarter and the same month that you get your copy, they turn around and put it on Amazon for half of the price and it's not that they're not quality decks, but those are the kind of people that you learn never to support on Kickstarter again. Because they're going to take it out to mass anyways. And because you supported them, you're going to pay double the cost, right? Double the price. And somebody's going to get it the same month. So there's just, you just have to be mindful. And... Yeah, so anyways, that's pretty much all I wanted to say about my experience and what I look for and when I don't see those things in a campaign, how I know whether or not it's going to be something that I want to take the risk for. Obviously, there's also... Like what I've said when I've done uh, the walk for walkthrough for this, um, the Naked Truth, um, and the first edition of this, and now the Chibi, the Chibi Tarot or Chibi Tarot, all by Baroque Publishing. I know I'm going to get a good quality product because I have backed them, right? I took the risk and backed them, and. It was a really good campaign. So when it comes to like Baroque publishing, I don't ever have to worry about it. And there's, and you do have to read the fine print because some of them might not come to ship to your country. Um, some of them might not collect the uh, shipping and it'll say that they're not going to collect the shipping until after it's until it's getting ready to be shipped because people have been burned by that as well because shipping prices keep going up. So if they quote you at a price now and then let's say it takes six months and then the shipping prices have gone up or they gouge anyways, then they're losing money, right? So read the fine print many times they do not collect the shipping until it's getting ready to ship and they'll send out surveys so you have to watch your email so that you can fill out the surveys and give them your address so that they ship it out the level of um follow through on it has to come from your end you need to be diligent as somebody that is supporting these people because i mean in many cases it's Sometimes it's a thousand people that are supporting something, you know, that are backing a project. It could be more than that, but I, in the tarot community, you know, I'm seeing roughly a thousand, sometimes even more than that. So do your due diligence and make sure that you're checking even your junk email so that you don't lose, you know, create like a Kickstarter folder in your email so that, and that's, that's what I do. So that all of my Kickstarters go and I can go back and check or go on to Kickstarter every so often if you are a big supporter and go through and check the updates, you know, on, on there. So it is really buyer beware, truly. It's wonderful to be supportive and I'm, I'm probably always going to support. 
I think it's wonderful to support, but I think that there are certain red flags that we want to watch for. And I am going to put a link down below to, like I said, this deck. Um, if it is available, uh, I'm not sure if it's available yet. If it is, you know, because they're still shipping the Kickstarter. If it is, I will find out where and I will put a link. Um, it's probably actually right on the Kickstarter where you can pre-order a pre-order button. But also a link down below to the new one that they've got coming out that's going to be, it's on a pre-launch page. But anyways, thank you for spending this time with me. If you have any questions about Kickstarter, please just leave me a comment down below. If you've had issues with Kickstarters, let me know and, you know, what your experience is or make a um, video because I think the more that we talk about our experiences through Kickstarter, it can only get better, hopefully, right? So I'm also going to leave a link down below because I am sure that Lisa did a video on Kickstarters and Obviously, she speaks much better than I do, and it's not all over the place like I am. So, I would highly recommend it. And if I can find it, I will put it down below, okay? So, thank you for spending this time with me, and I'm sending you love always.